Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I have with me John Pippin, who's a medical oncologist and one of the lead investigators uh, for trials for U.S. oncology. He is uh, from the Baylor Salmons Cancer Center in Dallas. And uh, John has been very active in clinical trials looking at newer chemotherapy agents. And one of the common themes uh, that has come up in a couple of trials now is the role of fluoropyrimidines, particularly the drug Zolota, also known as capecitabine. So John, can you give me just a little bit of background about this drug and the approach you all took in studying this in the early stage setting as adjuvant therapy? Certainly, our 01062 trial, as it's called, uh, started putting patients on study back in 2002. And what we were looking to do was try to build on an effective chemotherapy regimen that was already out there. We know that the so-called taxane drugs, when they follow adriamycin and cytoxan, are very effective. And we wanted to see if we could build on that in patients that had high-risk breast cancer. And so to do that, we chose a drug called capecitabine, or Zolota. And uh, this drug has had great success in the metastatic setting, and so we wanted to bring it a little bit earlier in the fight of breast cancer to those patients with early stage breast cancer and see if we could add to the successes that we've already had. So um, how was the trial set up? What were the two comparison arms? And maybe you can share the early results with us. Well, in our trial, there were over 2,600 patients that volunteered to participate. And what we looked at was the standard chemotherapy, which is adriamycin and cytoxin, given four cycles, three weeks apart, which was then followed by docetaxel, also known as taxotere, given at a full dose, also three weeks apart. And we compared that with basically the same chemotherapy, only at the second half of it, we added the drug capecitabine, or Zolota. And we wanted to see if that might be superior in preventing recurrences of breast cancer. So tell me a little bit about how the study went and what side effects you saw, and then ultimately the, 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 the big important part of this, right, is the number of recurrences. The study went very well. We were able to accrue the patients, in other words, get our number of subjects that we needed over a relatively short period of time. And during the time of the trial, we learned several things. We learned, first of all, that the original dose of the Zolota that we were using was probably a little too much. We ran into several side effects, one of which was mouth sores, or stomatitis as we call it. And also there were a lot of rashes on the hands and feet, which we refer to as hand-foot syndrome. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, we sort of changed our, our trial on the fly a bit and lowered the, or reduced the dose of the capecitabine to see if we could minimize that, that toxic effect, and we were able to do that. And so where are you now with the study? I know that uh, it has reached a milestone where you are reporting some of the results. Well, there are several good things about that. First of all, uh, there were few relapses, and I think that speaks to the effectiveness of our original backbone chemotherapy and, the, and speaks to past successes that all of us that fight breast cancer have already seen. Now, on top of that, we found a, an interesting thing. It turned out in what we would refer to as an exploratory analysis that patients that had very high proliferating tumors, in other words, growing fast, making new DNA, those patients might be the ones that really derive the best benefit and have the, the most number of reductions from using that newer combination with the capecitabine. Uh, what, what sort of differences did you see in the number of people that recurred over time? Yeah, and as of right now, there's not a whole lot of difference between the two arms, which once again speaks to the relatively few number of patients that have relapsed. It could be that over time, a little bit more difference will tease out. But right now, our main endpoint, which we refer to as disease-free survival, is really about the same between the two arms. But once again, back in, in the early 2000s when we were designing these trials, we lumped a lot of patients together. And we've learned a few things since then, and now we might split these apart to where the higher risk patients would be the ones that would get the, right. the Zolota if we were designing the trial today. And so from, from the conclusions, I think that there are going to be some patients within the, the overall group that benefit, and we're just now starting to tease those out. Right. And with the further analysis down the road, which we do have planned in, I believe it's August of 2012, we may have more results that have more statistical power 
to prove our point. That's one thing we're seeing with a lot of these trials is the treatments are more successful and the number of people that are recurrent are actually less than we expected. And, and, right. and as you said, I think it's going to be more and more important, I think, as we're realizing from other studies that we have to look at subgroups. And then obviously that takes more time because now you're right. analyzing a smaller number of people. In, in general terms, though, the, the addition uh, of another chemotherapy agent to improve, improve upon what we already have is something that has been looked at with uh, Zolota and other trials. C can you uh, summarize other trials? I know the FinX study was a, a mostly a European study, a Finnish study really in this specifically that, that looked at the addition uh, to uh, epirubicin and, and cytoxan. Uh, what, what was seen in that study and what do you think that, that means uh, in terms of uh, recommendations for patients now? Several of the other trials that have been done with this drug, it looks like that it might be an important addition to some of the chemo that's already been successfully used. And we've seen that in the preoperative setting. In other words, in patients that take their chemo up front before surgery. And so that looks very promising. And also we've had some good advances in patients with a metastatic breast cancer. In other words, cancer that spread to the bone, liver, lung, et cetera. And in that we've seen improved survival for those patients when they did receive the Zolota along with Docetaxel. Well, thank you so much for updating us on this area. It's great to have you here, John. You, you've, you and your group have really contributed a lot to uh, innovations in how we treat patients, and, and I think uh, uh, every little step we can take forward is important. So thanks for joining us, and thank you all as well for your attention. Thank you.